Video editing apps are constantly changing and they are not gonna stop anytime soon. This is actually a really good thing because they keep getting better and easier to use. In this video, we're going to look at what is available out there and what are my favorite editing apps on an iPhone. On the App Store, there are over 120 different iPhone video editing apps available. Of all of these, we have picked out the 23 supposedly best apps. This is judged on other people's recommendations and the user rating in the App Store itself. These are the apps in no order of preference. Adobe Premiere Clip, CuteCut Pro, B-Cut Video Editor, KineMaster or KineMaster, InShot, Video Shop, Filmmaker Pro, WeVideo, Horizon, PicPlay Post, Quick, Viva Video, iMovie, LumaFusion, Video Show, Magisto, Adobe Premiere Rush, Enlight Video Leap, Low Motive Music, VSCO or Visco Video Editor, Filmora Video Editor, Power Director for iOS, and that's a new one. And yes, you guessed it, the 23rd one is the Splice Video app. As I said, I'm in the process of testing all of these. I'm already halfway through the list and three of these have jumped out as superior to the rest. In this video, I want to focus on these three and compare them to each other and point out the pros and cons of each one. The three apps that I'm talking about are Splice, as you've seen, we've done quite a few tutorials on this already on our channel, but also iMovie and PowerDirector. I'm gonna start off the comparisons by looking at the pros and cons of Splice. Splice Pros. The timeline has a simple but professional layout, something you would hope for in a desktop editing app. The clip length is identifiable by a visual representation. You can see that this clip is literally longer than this one next to it, which helps you when you're doing the trimming process. The menus are laid out in a logical way for the most part. When you need something, it's right there, clearly marketed and intuitive to follow the process. I do have two little niggles here, but I'll come back to those in just a moment. On with the pros. You can add multiple layers of sound, effects and titles and toggle between them using this button here. When you work on a small screen like this, it's a great way to pack away all the excess, which normally looks like this on a desktop app, but here you have the space. In Splice, I like the fact that they pack it away so that the little screen space that you have is clear and doesn't overwhelm you. That brings me on to the downsides or the cons of Splice. Exactly opposite to my last point, it's great that it stacks away, but it can be a little confusing if you're trying to drop the volume levels in the music specifically. I feel that the music should have its own timeline and not be grouped in with the titles and effects. If you have to make splits in the music, it then packs away each piece and you have to highlight the parts individually. It's not impossible to do this, but it just gets a little bit messy. You can see how this method works in one of our other tutorials. Another thing that is possible, but it's hard to find, is the split tool. Split is just such a vital part of trimming when it comes to the video editing process. It's something that you wanna have close because you're gonna use it often. I'm really glad that Splice has now included it, but when I tap a clip, I want this to be the first thing in the submenu, not all the way back here. At least the submenu does remember where you were, so you don't need to reset back to the front. If I choose another clip in the submenu, we'll just stay here. So I can apply all the splits in one go. Similarly, the Ken Burns effect on still images is very easy to use, but it's hidden. You need to find it at the back of the submenu. When I work with still images, I want this to be right up front as my first option because it's the thing I'm gonna use the most. My last downside to Splice is that it started out as a free app and now it carries a price tag as a subscription model. And it's not exactly cheap. I understand that the company needs to live and feed itself, but at $3 a week in a world with so much competition, 
what does their subscription service offer me that I can't make another plan with in a app that is free like iMovie. I still love using Splice. It, it's got everything you need in a phone editor, but I am starting to weigh up the pros versus the cons of another app that might be free like iMovie. So let's look at iMovie in comparison. iMovie pros. Let's start with the obvious. iMovie is free and it comes with your phone. It's really, really easy to use. And as you can see, I've used it countless times already. When you tap on a clip, the first option is to split and detach. Both very important for the editing process. The sub menu and the main menu are in the same place, meaning you don't have to go into deep menus and get lost. The audio track lies in its own timeline and you can see all the parts even after you make a split. Additionally, iMovie is smart enough to push the music into the background when you have a clip that has audio in it. If you remove the clip's audio, then the music will automatically take the foreground. This can save a lot of time. iMovie also has a cool trailer feature which allows you to create films automatically I don't use this tool at all, but having looked around and played with it for a bit, I can see it can be a lot of fun. You get to fill in all the info, which they automatically place in the video. And also it shows you what shots you need to get, inadvertently teaching you how to make better videos. And that's pretty cool. Lastly, the Ken Burns feature is intuitive and easy to set up. However, the cons. The auto help on the Ken Burns is so good, you can't shrink an image below the screen size if you want to. Remember this in Splice? Well, you can't do this in iMovie. It automatically adjusts to fill the screen. And this can drive you mental. So you have to go outside of the app to fix it. Next. A new project automatically adds a cross dissolve to each and every clip. You can't switch this off in some general setting, which means you have to go to each one manually. Also because the clips are not sort of linked in the timeline, but as hover blocks, you can't see the true ending of the clip until you switch off the transition. Watch how turning off the cross dissolve lengthens the clip, showing the part that would have been lost to the cross dissolve, making fine tuning and trimming very messy and very difficult. In iMovie and all editing apps that still use this old system, I'm not a fan of text that is associated or attributed to the video clip. It's better when it's an external element. Like this in Splice, your text is a separate layer. In iMovie, it's an attribute of this clip, meaning it's not straightforward if you want to run the text over two clips. While I'm on the subject of this block view, it's okay as it still shows the length of the clip, but when you play, there is the illusion that the playback is jumping. Every time the playhead moves from one clip to the next, there's a jump. This only happens when there is no transition, but it can make you feel like something's wrong with your edit. And in, when in fact, it's just the playhead in the timeline confusing you. This might sound like a very petty thing, but often I've had to go back and look sort of what's wrong here and then realize, oh no, it's just the playback. It's wasted my time. Moving into the last one, which is PowerDirector. PowerDirector is brand new to iOS or Apple devices. I have always recommended it as our main Android video editor. And now that it works on both, it just shows me that they are, as a company, moving forward and constantly developing their products, which is great. Of all the apps that I've ever tried on a mobile phone, PowerDirector is the most similar to a desktop editor. It has the same look and feel and functions. The biggest pro by far is the use of multiple video layers. This makes B-roll situations possible where you can keep one track with the master audio rolling on while other footage covers it. To get in touch with where coffee comes from, whether it's the green, the producers, but as well. And that is a win, win, win. In other mobile apps, you have to make a funny, difficult workaround 
in which you detach the audio and then put other clips there. And, and if you make a mistake, it's unaligned and it, it just gets messy. In this case, you've got the multiple tracks. Great. The media library is very intuitive. The timeline is neat. The sub menus are super advanced and lined up correctly. Look how split is the first option. Let's look at the downsides. As an app, this might be a little bit overkill for a smartphone. It's everything you want in a video editor, but with this many controls in such a small screen, it squashes it. And I often feel that this would be easier to just move over to my computer and edit there. And that's not a fault of PowerDirector's creators. They've done a good job. But if I'm creating a video at that level, I am going to go to my computer. Even with years of editing experience and liking these tools, when I have to make a quick little video that I want to share with somebody directly from my phone, I often just dive straight into iMovie because it's free, it's quick, it's easy, and it's good enough for the point of that video purpose. So PowerDirector is free to use, but it wants just over $5 a month to remove the watermark and add a couple of other pro features. And this should probably be on the pro list because that's a really, really good price for an editor as comprehensive as this. But with so many options out there that almost do the same thing, I might pick something else. Now, if I have to throw these apps straight up head to head, I'd have a hard time telling you which one to use because I don't know your situation. If you are a complete entry level uh, first time video maker, then stay with iMovie, try it, see if you even like this process. And if you do, if you become sort of a, a video hobby maker, then move up to one of the other two apps. In conclusion, my suggestion to you is try all three and try all three with the same video. Like we've done in our tutorials, we use the same one so that we can feel how the process compares to the other. Take 10 clips off your phone and edit it in each one and see how it feels. If you'd like to see a walkthrough of each of these or detailed tutorial tips, check out the blog on our website. There'll be a link in the description below. I hope this information has been really valuable and we'd like to hear from you what your favorite editing app is. So please, in the comments below, let us know what it is or if you have any questions about these first three that we've looked at. My name is Dean, you're watching TravelVids.tv and I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.